Let's talk about some faves and fails that I had for January 2023. Oh my gosh, I almost said the wrong year. It's been a second since I've done a favorites video. I did one at the end of November and then I thought I was gonna do some big finale like favorites video for 2022 and I ended up really just not doing that. So it's been a second since we've really talked. I have a few things here. I don't feel like it's an overwhelming amount but I really love the stuff I'm gonna talk about so I hope you guys will enjoy. I also do have some fails though, some things that didn't work out but yeah let's get into it first i'm gonna start off with one of my favorite things i have a lot of eyeshadow to talk about and this was not something on my radar well it was kind of on my radar i was looking at this quad from bobby brown this is the Lux eyeshadow quad it's for lunar new year i had seen some photos it was pretty warm toned so i was kind of like mm, i don't think it's going to be for me and so i had made up my mind that i was not going to get this but then one of you guys let me know it's like super good so that made me like okay let me go like check it out again and i don't know if i saw it in person or what it was but something compelled me to get it and I am so glad I picked this quad up I'm pretty um I try to be pretty picky about like limited edition specific stuff just because I want it to be something I'm really gonna love in my collection. And so I try to let that stuff pass if I can help it, but something compelled me, you know, there was something and I am so glad. This is so beautiful, you guys. I hate to be that person to be like, you need this. And like, you don't need this. At the end of the day, you don't need this. You'll survive, everything's fine. But I'm just saying, if you had, if you were like me and you had on your radar, this quad is beyond beautiful. Okay, so what's in here? There are four eyeshadows in here. All of these are full size eyeshadows. The whole quad retails, I believe, for $55, but Bobbi Brown single eyeshadows are $40 a piece anyway. There are some re promoted colors in here. I know for sure Moonstone is a shade in the permanent line, but what is so exciting about this is how textural these shadows are. I was not expecting the flakiness, the shimmer, the shine. Like, I didn't know this was happening over at Bobbi Brown. <laughs> I didn't realize if I had known, if I had only known earlier, I would be over there faster. So, Moonstone semi sheer pretty sheer overall unless you want to like build it over a sticky base very flaky very dry like that baked formula it reminds me of the texture of the special shades of Pat McGrath so that is kind of what you're looking at there this is like a champagne it has a little bit of warmth to it just so stunning so so beautiful next to it sun flare is a golden bronze color this has a nice warmth to it it's not super duper yellow because we get to a more like yellowy orange shade in a second but this has that same very pieced out very flaky very like obscene like if you are not into sparkle this is not going to be the quad for you but if you like that texture i'm telling you this is doing it in a luxe way so beautiful but still intense still intense sometimes luxe can mean like subdued kind of, but not these. <laughs> these two for sure, super, super sparkly. Then there's Citrine. This one has a little bit more base to it, so it's not quite as like semi-sheer as the other two we've talked about. This is a more like orangey, saturated, warm toned color. Really beautiful. I didn't know if I was gonna use that. That's like the one color I was like, do I even do that? I am so excited to have this just all over the lid. I've been using it more as like an accent piece, but for summer, oh, it's going all over. I can't wait to just pat just that out. And then last, Metal Rose, it's not nearly as special as the other ones. This is more of a satin shade, but the color is stunning. It's that perfect taupey, rosy, bronzy color. And I absolutely love the finish on it. I like that it isn't so sparkly because it gives me at least one shadow in here to kind of put all over my eye. And then I can pick any of the other shadows to kind of complement it, use with it, whatever I wanna do. I've honestly probably used Metal Rose the most out of everything because it is so easy to use. It's easy to throw in the outer corner and because it's that satin it looks really good in the crease for me and just kind of like all over the lid just that perfect amount of definition for me as well so I am in love I am so glad I picked this up I will be on the lookout for all of the different looks quads coming out from Bobbi Brown I want to go swatch all the eyeshadows like I am fully on board <laughs> I'm too on board, honestly. So glad I picked this up. And I know it's an expensive quad on its own, but if you're looking at it in terms of four $40 eyeshadows in one quad, it's a pretty good value, especially if you're already looking at Moonstone. So just wanted to throw it out there. Like if you had on your radar, like it's good. It's really, 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 really good. 
it's like really good guys and i was not expecting it i was not expecting that palette to come through like that for me the other palette that i have is just one that i've been using so much since i got it it's like a workhorse for me and i feel like on days when i don't know what i want to use this is what i've been going to and you've seen this in videos as well cashmere from viseart i really just have been loving in general my viseart shadows but this palette is just a perfect cool tone palette i'm sure when this came out i just wasn't into these types of tones i mean this doesn't look like anything special like if you're used to really bright colors like you know for the longest time i only really wanted bright punches and pops and that's all i was interested in so something like this compared to that i mean <laughs> it looks boring but this is so pretty very subtle differences in tone here but i feel like for every day like i said just throwing one of these shimmers whatever shimmer you want on the lid and then kind of blending out if i want i can deepen it up this shade here is like a perfect darker color for me because it's not an actual black it's like this charcoal brown gray very deep and almost black but not and so i really like those kinds of tones if i want i can go a little bit more purple a little bit more mauve and i just i love this one i really really do it's a great everyday type of palette if you're into cool tones i'm thinking about doing like a cool tone palette for sure i need to do like an updated minky eyeshadow like video but this has probably gotten the single most use out of all the Viseart palettes I bought and if you watched my Black Friday haul video which if you haven't I'll leave it linked down below I got a lot of Viseart okay <laughs> I got a lot and this by far has gotten the most use. I have two more shadow products to talk about. I have some single shadows. I just have to mention and shout out the Odin's Eye singles. I decided to put all of my favorite ones in here, but these have just gotten me into color again. Like again, I like my neutrals, but I have been experimenting with more pops of color. I've just been more inspired in general to play and just feel what I want with my makeup. Like what am I feeling? I don't know. <laughs> That makes sense if I'm getting too weird, but I have really been enjoying these. It's so strange because this month has felt like forever. We'll get into more updates as we go into this video, but it's honestly felt like the longest month. I can't believe these came out earlier this month. That's when I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? Time gets so warped, I swear. But if you haven't seen my swatch video, I feel like I did pretty good swatches. If you really want some details, if you were looking into these, I think that could really be a good resource for you to see if any of these colors are right for you. They're all shimmer. There are no mattes in the collection at this point. I'm assuming this will happen sometime down the road, but I've really been loving these and just been having fun exploring my duo chromes. And not only these, I've been pulling out some of my Cleona shadows again and, you know, just kind of getting back back to some of my old favorites when it comes to the colorful sparkly stuff, the duochrome and multi-chrome sparkly stuff, and I've really been enjoying that. I even did an all colorful look recently, added some rhinestones, like I've really just had so much fun exploring, and these are definitely a big push for that. So really love those. And then last, you guys, this is newest addition to my collection, but it's a drugstore single eyeshadow. I was just, you know, perusing. I know I made the whole video <laughs> saying the drugstore has nothing, and a lot of you guys agree and a lot of you guys who work in stores said that January is like the worst month like I literally went in the worst time so I'm trying to give the drugstore chances you know popping into different ones different places here there everywhere around town in different places and recently I went out of town for the weekend and so I stopped in and I was looking at the single shadows and this one caught my eye from Maybelline it's called Sterling Grage we have all been sleeping on this seriously such an amazing eyeshadow Oh my gosh, from the drugstore, $5. That's how much it was at my CVS, which CVS is just like the Ritz Carlton of freaking like in price. I'm not saying it's like super nice in there, but damn, they really love to charge you. They have to pay for that receipt paper. <laughs> That's what it is. Anyway, this color is beautiful. That's what we're really at. <laughs> this is such a beautiful semi-sheer, has some nice sparkle to it, but not too big. So if you don't want really chunky, sparkly, flaky stuff like in the Bobbi Brown, this is more of a middle ground. Obviously it's way more affordable as well, but man, so luxe. This is what I'm wearing today. I should explain to you how I did my makeup. So I started out with an eye primer, which honestly is another fave. I've just been enjoying like a thinner eye primer instead of the cream bases I was using for a long time. I still like that look. I can see myself going 
going back to that at some point, but just lately, man, just something nice and thin where my lid is still my lid texture. It's not, I don't wanna say gooped out, but blinked out, I guess, with a cream. Really been loving that. So eye primer, put that on my lids, blend that out, let it set just a little bit, you know, so it's not super, super wet. Then I went in with the Bobbi Brown palette, went in with that metal rose shade, and really was just focusing that more on the outer corner. I really wanted to build up just that little bit of depth. It's not a super dark color on me, but it is enough for every day for what I'm looking for. So built that up, kind of just blended out the edges best I could. Then I went in with this Maybelline shadow, Sterling Grage, and just patted that everywhere. Even, you know, patted over that metal rose. It is just so beautiful. I love the amount of shine that this has. It feels like a luxe shadow. I will say it's a little powdery, like, you know, it's just soft. It's not like powdery as in dusty chalky, just powdery as in like not very hard pressed. And you know, I dip my fingers in and pat my eyeshadows on and I do have to kind of like, you know, be careful I don't get too much on. <laughs> my finger or I will get a little bit of fallout with it, but such a stunning color. If I could, how do I describe this color? It is kind of a bronzy, not quite cool tone, not quite warm toned though, shade. It has more of like a silver reflect in the sparkle, but that little bit of warmth, I feel like it's just natural yet glam, like that perfect natural yet glam. And it's at the drugstore in a single shadow. Like, yes, you need to check this out. I literally was like, are we all sleeping on this? And Jen Phelps is not. <laughs> she made a video like 11 months ago I was like because I literally was like who else is like I need to know like am I just behind you know like not finding it and I feel like hers was like really the only video I really saw talking about it so she's on top of it she has all the drugs so I'm gonna leave that video down below obviously check out her channel but man such a good one truly an amazing drugstore gem so um, I'm really excited to have this in my collection excited to find some more single shadows as well I have another one I'm testing out from L'Oreal but I haven't used it enough to really let you guys know this one ever since I got can't put it down. <laughs> I cannot put this thing down. Okay, let me finish my eye look. What else did I do to create this beautiful little eye look? I did add a little bit of the Odin's eye. I love that kind of iridescent green shade. I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now. Why not? Lola, Lola. I tapped a little bit of Lola kind of in that upper brow area like I like to do. Um, I decided eventually to go over that with one of the shades from the Bobbi Brown palette, but I also used the shade Citrine, that like warm bronzy color as a pop on my lower lid and I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful look. So really I've been doing a variation of this eye look like every day, <laughs> like almost every day this month besides the times I'm doing color, truly. So those are all my eyeshadow loves. Like I said, I had the primer and then I do have a couple of liners that I've been loving. One is the Urban Decay Liner in Mushroom. You've probably been seeing me talk about this a lot or use it a lot in my videos. I've just been really into non-black eyeliners. Like if I can get anything as close to black as possible without being black or even anything kind of in a mid tone with a shimmer I want to try it so if you have anything in that you know zone let me know and <laughs> tell me down below this is a beautiful like gray and it just looks so so good it has a warmer base on it than a cooler base and I think that's what really just makes it blend nicely on my eyes and give me that definition without being too stark it's creamy it's easy to use I've just been obsessed with it and it's really ignited my love for the Urban Decay 24 7 I mean I know these are classics but I kind of felt like for a while they're over like oh, whatever no they're so good and they have so many different colors mushrooms specifically if you like something not too harsh and you like using sharpenable eyeliners this one's really good definitely check it out I got it on the sale I would suggest doing that they do like buy one get one free that's how I got this and I got smog as well which is beautiful but these go on like the Ulta deals all of that so you know look out for a deal but once the deal happens it's a good one to pick up the other eyeliner I've really been loving this was featured in my most recent video which was in collaboration with Yes Style and this is from McQueen and specifically I've really been loving the number four eyeliner. This is more of a warm tone and it's been pairing so perfectly with the Bobbi Brown palette. I love using this as like a pop on more the inner portion of my bottom or lower lash line. So I'll go in with the uh, Urban Decay one or just a different liner or even just shadow on that outer corner to give me that definition to kind of like make my eyes a little bit bigger and defined. Yeah, you guys get it. I'll also use that like on the 
top lash, a little bit of tight lining, again, more in that outer half of my eye. But this will take and kind of blend in between the two and more into the inner part of that lower lash line and it has a nice amount of sparkle. Not too much, it's not too glittery, but the color really bounces off well with my eyes, really makes them pop, makes them really blue. But I also feel like it just captures a nice amount of light and it's a little bit unexpected. So I feel like it just draws like this nice sultry attention. Again, it has a little bit of that shimmer, which I just, I love a shimmery freaking eye pencil and just a shimmery lower lash line. Like I can't get enough of it, you guys. <laughs> it is one of my obsessions, seriously. So I love this. And then today I topped over, like I said, with that citrine color from in here. And I've been doing that a lot. I did that for my actual birthday look. I know I did a whole video talking about my birthday look. And although I definitely took some inspiration from that, it was a totally different look because uh, my plans got foiled. And I was just working with what I had and zhuzhing that up to go out for the night, which worked out great. It looked, it looked really good, don't get me wrong, but it was not the look that I made in that video. It was not what I intended. Anyway, love this liner. And this one is super affordable. It's like three bucks. I find it to be really creamy, glides on really great. It's a little bit stiffer than the Urban Decay, but still glides. And I don't actually mind that because I wouldn't say the Urban Decay are too glidey, but something like, let's say the Victoria Beckham Beauty, you guys know, I'm not really, I haven't been driving too much with that stuff, but those are so creamy. It's like you touch your eye and it like melts. <laughs> it melts into a blob. I'm like, okay, can I get a, like, you know, just want a, a little bit of precision. So um, I've really been loving these, great price point. So loving that so much. I think we might be on to the last like makeup favorite and this is a blush. I tried this out earlier last year and this is the cream blush in M72 from Mob Beauty. Love this, you guys, this is such a beautiful color. I feel like, you know, earlier on this month, especially because I was sick, recovering from stuff, I feel like I'm still kind of like in a weird zone. But when I was still wanting to do my makeup, I wanted to be fast. This was like the only thing I'd go for, but this also looks good with that kind of sandwich and layering technique I like to do with cream blushes, where I'll put a cream blush on and then put another powder blush on like later on in the look. Anyway, it's just super versatile, no matter what I kind of want to do. This is just a beautiful color. I feel like it adds some life. It's not too bright though like I don't have to worry about putting too much on I love to apply it with my tried and true BK beauty brush this is my favorite brush for cream blushes if you're looking for a cream blush brush this is the one I suggest it is just great I love how it applies creams it applies them super evenly and just like easy I just kind of stipple and tap it on looks super airbrushed um, and specifically with this blush it's more of a stiffer and not as like emollient or kind of greasy or really shiny cream blush some cream blush formulas have that kind of wet look to them or kind of greasy look to them and I like a lot of those as well and I find this brush also helps kind of sop some of that up so on my oily skin I don't get as heavy a dose of that anyway can I stick to a thought this goes on almost kind of matte like this in between like a more mm, semi natural finish like semi-matte, demi-matte is what they call it, I guess. Just beautiful, just stunning, so easy, so effortless. If I want it to be a little more dewy, it can look like that. I don't have to set this, I find, for it to like stick around a normal amount of time. Maybe not the most, you know, long wear ever. It's not like that, but it just is a great product. I feel so good in it. I feel just comfortable and pretty in my skin. So I've been loving this. It makes me want to try so much more from Ma Beauty. I know that's what's going to happen this year. Like I am going to be making one of those mega <laughs> palettes at some point this year. Just really beautiful, really, really beautiful. Makes me want to try some other colors as well. Great experience with the brand so far from this one product. Okay, so that's all the makeup stuff. That's what I've been loving. I don't feel like that's too much. Like, you know, it's really just been things I keep going back to. I do have a few other favorites I wanted to mention. I also wanted to just like chat a little bit about some like more life favorites, things like that. And then we'll get into the fails. There's only like three fails at the end. So I have to mention a perfume, you guys, because hello. Oh, I love perfume. I know I don't do my scent Sundays on here anymore. If you're missing those videos, I have a whole fragrance channel now. So go check that out if you're interested. I'll have it linked down below. It's just Lauren May Fragrance. It's like the same thing, but not. These are the two scents that I've been loving the most, but I intend on doing like a perfumes, like current perfume faves and really going more into depth, more into the nuances of stuff. But for this video, I have two I want to talk about. This is from Keese and this is Macaron. So if you're a super gourmand lover, you love things that smell like food, they smell super sweet, they smell like heavy almost, kind of thick, 
This is for you guys, this is for you guys. This is a cherry almond macaron type of scent. I mean, I don't even know if I get macaron from it, but if you like something like Lush Yognog, I think you should try this. It is similar, it's not the same, but I get that kind of tart cherry at the top, but then it turns into something really creamy. There's a little bit of spice coming off, at least to me, and then it almost turns kind of coconutty on me. I'm just obsessed with this. This is so cozy, I think, especially for like the colder weather on cold days, it's been so rainy here in LA as well. On those days, this just lasts and lasts on my skin and on my clothes. Like it just doesn't go away and that's pretty nice. It's a pretty high oil concentration. It's almost kind of oily in there. And so um, really, really love this one. But I've also been kind of getting out of that. I know I just mentioned something heavy, gourmand, so sweet, but I've also been really loving something a little bit brighter. I know that I'm gonna be craving those things, especially as we get into spring. I'm like ready for the change. Like I'm ready to tuck my little vanillas and good night. I love them. <laughs> I love my vanillas, but I'm ready to, um, you know, just get into something a little bit fresher, a little bit lighter. I don't want to be cozied up. I want to be outside. I want to be in the sun. I want to be like, you know, doing shit. And sometimes those heavier scents don't really make me feel that way. But a nice transition that I've been getting into, this is from Wilhelm. It's Dear Polly. And this is from the Lucky Yellow set. I did a little short on my fragrance channel and this was sent to me from Toasted Lily. It was like a set of three. I originally had had mango skin and I love mango skin so much. I have the bottle of that one and really none of the other scents from the house interested me. I just wasn't like very interested but recently I have been so into like so many of the Wilhelm perfumes it's just sometimes you connect with something it takes you a second your nose changes things change whatever and I'm just really connecting with the house right now so Dear Polly is a tea scent has black tea some citruses and I also get a little bit of a sweetness that almost smells like honey so to me this is like a honeyed black tea with like a slice of lemon in it and I really quite like it it's still cozy it still has some warmth to it but there's still something kind of refreshing about it. It's like a refreshing version of Te Noir from Le Labo. I feel like it's like brighter than that one with the way the citruses are in here. So really enjoying that one. Those are like my fragrance faves, but I also have a soap to talk about because you guys, Terracotta Canyon is back at Bath & Body Works. Okay, this is my absolute favorite hand soap smell from Bath & Body Works. I believe it came out last year. I don't know if it was re-promoted from a different year, but the first time I experienced it was last year. I think it was the first time it was out and they brought it back this year. I literally, when I went in store, I was like, <laughs> I'm getting 10 of those. Like, I love this. This, just smells expensive. This does not smell like a normal Bath and Body Works type of thing. This smells like something at a fancy hotel. This smells like something like Le Labo would make a soap that smells like this. I'm, it's so good. It smells expensive. I'm telling you, just when you, if you're in Bath and Body Works, if you have access to one, and you're in there, smell this. It has notes of golden amber, desert jasmine, and warm sandalwood. It is just so good. It makes my hands smell so good, but not too strong. It's just like that perfect amount. I pretty much decided like I don't really wanna get that many Bath & Body Works scents. Like I don't wanna try a bunch of different soaps. I just love the Aesop soap so much. Like that's my all time favorite, but this competes because of the way it smells. Like none of my other Bath & Body Works do, but this one is so good. So I'm definitely stocking up because it's just so nice to have around the house. It's nice to have soaps like I do enjoy having that, especially truly the pandemic taught me that. I was like, okay, we need soap. Hello, we need to stay soaped up. Anyway, just thought I would give you guys a little announcement that that is back. And um, if you didn't get to try it last year and you've heard me talk about it, I think you should try it out. It's so freaking good. I think I really only have like one real media favorite. I wanted to shout out Don FM, the album from The Weeknd. If you haven't listened to the album all the way through, I highly suggest it, you know? This is my weekend to you, okay? You wanna stay at home, you wanna have a nice weekend in, have a good time, figure out a meal you wanna cook yourself, a nice meal, you know, that you're gonna like have fun. It's a little relaxing, but maybe a little challenging, something new, whatever. Have a little wine with that. I don't know what else you're into, but do whatever you gotta do, okay? <laughs> you're feeling it you're having a good time and then listen to this album it's only like an hour long but it is just so good it's like it's a radio station the topics are a little heavy but it's also it's like layered so you can just enjoy it as like amazing bops like everything's a good song all by itself they also all flow into each other which is awesome but if you want to get into it it's also layered it's also good if you want to like look into it deeper but uh, I just love the album I'm like obsessed with it 
That's all I want to do is like listen to that, hang out. Just thought if you needed a nice like weekend night in or weekday, I don't know what you're doing. I, no judgment here. Do your thing. Uh, it's a nice listen and it just sounds so good. It's like dancey and just amazing. It's just a great experience and it's especially fun. I feel like if you're having fun, you know? Last couple of things before we get into fails. It was my birthday month. My birthday is in January. I'm an Aquarius. And so that was just really nice. I had a great time with friends and I just have the best friends. I really do. I have such amazing friends and I just felt really loved and I just feel really appreciative of that. And that kind of leads into just, you know, it's been a weird month. I feel like a weird kind of start to the year, a positive one overall, but you know, I was sick and I've been dealing with just a ton of stress. I have some really awesome things coming up. I have like awesome things things I'm grateful for now as well. And it's just been a lot. Also just coming off of the holiday, that's always just a really busy and hectic time. You know, job, family, all that, traveling, like it's just a lot. And I've been so stressed out. And I just wanted to, sh you know, I like talking about mental health. So I know everyone kind of is in their own place with that, where you're at, but I really just wanted to say and something that I'm trying to remember, because I feel like I'm trying to like level up in a lot of areas at once. And that maybe doesn't feel as rewarding because you don't have one thing that just shoots into the atmosphere amazing but I feel like part of what my journey is is trying to find that balance a bit it's just super important to like one put your own mask on first like you cannot help others you cannot do all these things if you're not like at a base level of okayness, you know? And if you can, I know that in a lot of ways that can be hard to do depending on what other obligations you have, but finding ways to get to that kind of like equilibrium, I guess, that like base feeling is just so important and like a good foundation. And I'm really trying to make that happen even when it feels like I'm behind in other things and whatever, it's like, I can't just let everything start sliding or my whole life starts to slide. And I think it's also kind of this thing of like, even when the good things are going well, like you're doing your self care, you're doing like the true self care. I mean like the hard shit, you know, like your laundry and like <laughs> your actual skincare and like cooking for yourself really good nutritious food and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? Like the true, true stuff that leads to a good life and all that. It's so important to when you are feeling good and like that's all working that you keep doing that stuff. <laughs> Like you have to keep doing it. You can't like start being like, eh, everything's going good. Like it's a little bit easier to do this and that's going well and I don't need to do that. And like, no, you need to keep doing that stuff. That's why you feel so good, girl, <laughs> okay? That's why your anxiety isn't making you crippled and not being able to text all your friends back or literally send an email. You know what I'm saying? I just thought I would throw that out there because I'm learning that I've just had a lot of stress and panic attacks and just, you know, I'm over here dealing with it, but I feel still in a good spot. It's just hard. And even though everything is still going really well and I am leveling up, it's still something I have to learn. And it's still something I have to be really cognizant of. And I thought I would just mention it here in my favorites because although it's not fun to like learn that lesson, I do still think, you know, working on myself and, and trying to be in a good place is like a favorite and a thing that I wanna be doing. So yeah, mentioning that kind of personal. And let's talk about some shitty shit. Okay, fails. I only have like one makeup makeup fail. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Colourpop. I know it seems like I roast you all the time. I do have some things I love. I love the Super Shocks. I love the Super Shock highlighters, the blushes, but this concealer, the Pretty Fresh, for me does not work. I know so many people love it. And initially I thought this looked really good, but there is just something about this. It makes my eyes look, it makes me look like I have more bags than I do under my eyes. This just ages my under eye in a way that just is not accurate, okay? It's not what it actually looks like. It's with this product. And I've noticed that like the last three times I've worn it. So that's a no. Um, I'm so sorry. I wanted to work. I really work but it didn't it just does not look good uh it's kind of like into the wear is when i notice it which kind of sucks because i'm like what the fuck is this what i look like and it's like yeah <laughs> you look like right now girl the other two things these are more like body care but i got this little sample of the moroccan oil hand cream i've actually had the full size of this in the past but i feel like they've changed the smell on this and so um it smells more soapy and not nearly like that delicious like ambery warm moroccan oil scent it does not smell like that so that's disappointing the texture is still nice but the actual smell isn't and then this is also a smell issue with lush i got this in like the halloween box that came out they do like a lush subscription box and I got it for two months glad I got it for that November month because it had Yagnog in it but this came in the October one and it's called ghost it's supposed to be lily jasmine and rose and it is just powdery makeup wipe clean diaper 
to me, to me, if you like this, I'm so happy for you, girl. Um, but to me, it's just a little too floral, powdery. <sighs> uh, nothing safe in it, you know? Again, I like the Yognog. And I also, I just recently picked up Sticky Dates, I think it's called. Ooh, that one is so good too. So yeah, unfortunately, just this scent is not good. So I'm hoping I can find someone to pass it on to that will enjoy it. Like, I don't want to pass this off to someone who also agrees with me. And it's like, that smells bad. So I need to find someone who loves this scent and hopefully I can do that and then pass it on to them. Cause I do like the Lush uh, shower gels, but this one's a no, a big fat no. But I'm gonna leave it here. I know this was kind of a chatty one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for being here. I know I say that at the end of my video is kind of like part of my outro, but man, do I mean it. I really mean it. So thanks for being here. I hope you're doing well. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.